Hello and welcome to my channel on human design. This time we're going to be looking at the survivor's guide for reflectors. Now why reflectors? <clears throat> There's about 1.4% of people in the world that are reflectors. So it's not like this the majority, there's a very small minority of people that are reflectors. But what I found is that people learning human design, they often don't really understand reflectors. So this is also information for those of you who are new, those of you who haven't um, met many reflectors and want to know more about them. The first thing to realize is that they experience time in a very different way to the rest of us. They are basically here to live their life according to what they're experiencing. Uh, one of my reflector friends referred to their life as being, well, Richard, we are experience, experiencing experience. You know, they are they are just taking it in. And the aura is, it's, it's Teflon. It's like things are designed to drop off from that aura as they move through sampling this and sampling that picking up that emotional energy, picking up that mental stream, picking up that uh, that splenic uh, awareness. And not only that, so, so time, you've got to understand they need much more time than anyone else in making a decision. Why? Because unlike the rest of us that are based in, if you like, sun dynamics, they are based in moon dynamics. So it is the moon that moves them. It is the moon that is the, the initiating factor for different life forces to be activated. A reflector, as we know, is a design without any fixed life force. So they don't compare, like if you have something fixed in you, even if it's a single channel, that is always there. That is always there, no matter what's going on, whether it's conscious or unconscious. And it's that that is connecting to the life but when you don't have that when there is no anchor in the personality or in the uh, or in the design or indeed it keeps moving then you've got a completely different way of life so the moon is moving around activating gate after gate which is activating a whole channel of life force which then has to be experienced so think about it if you look at the wheel and you start in the first quarter, which begins with the 13th gate and moves all the way down to the 24th gate, you'll see that in that first half of that, that quarter of the wheel, there's all the emotional gates apart from the sixth gate. So what's that like? It means if you're a reflector, and this is for the reflectors in terms of your survival and understanding what's happening to you, there will be a period every month where one emotional stream after another is kicking off and it's different. And that can be very confusing. And people wonder, you know, what the hell is going on? And you wonder what the hell is going on. And then the moon moves on and that's all over. There may be some processing, of course, from all that emotional activation, but it's gone. It's gone until the next time, the next month. I mean, you've got to experience this and you've got to experience it purely at least once in your life. That's another aspect of the survival is to realize that you can experience what I've just described cleanly and purely. And you do anyway, but it may not be purely. You see other people, other auras coming around the reflector will also activate open centers, will activate and create um joinings with what they've already got in them as terms of gates so the advice from ra and the feedback i've got from people that have done it reflectors that have done it is to leave the human aura to leave the human world if you can for a full month and then you will experience the gates going off i would go in there with a um, a map of the month the way the moon moves and to know what channels are going to be uh, brought alive in you and for how long usually around between uh, eight to ten to twelve hours usually ten so then you get to experience your chart which is like a moving chart as it actually moves 
And if you don't understand that, if you don't have that perspective, then what what's the life going to be? The life is going to be um, you're different every day. <laughs> you know, it's like, who am I today? Which is one of those questions. Who am I today? I remember seeing a reflector uh, over a period of time. And it was really like, well, this is someone different to who I was talking to yesterday because a whole different uh, circuit had been activated uh, and, and obviously the themes that go with it. So that's, the, that's what you have to understand and getting a clean experience by having someone obviously leave food for you so you don't have to interact with them. You don't have to um, come into contact with their auras and you keep away from the human world for a month. That'll give you a good um, indication of actually who you are. And it might be, you know, it might feel quite heavy to begin with. I'm not saying it won't because suddenly you're not around the life force. You've got to go through that barrier and get to the point where you're being able to experience life in a different way and you'll be fine. Um, in fact, the last person I asked about it, they went up for a month on this uh, on this hill and uh, the day they were going to come down, they left a note saying, I'm going to stay for another month. So it is something that it's a very can be a very empowering and uh, crucial experiment for a reflector to run. So as I say, this type is here to sample this and sample that um, according to what's coming through. So they're, if you like, channeling the program itself and, and really looking for what is different, looking for the surprise in the experiencing. Uh, whether it through it be through people or whether it through, be through a direct experience of what's around at all the different levels uh, it's not just the human realm that's a that's another thing to understand it's not just the human realm that reflectors are here to participate in um, and too often they think they should be like everyone else and they try to fit in and they get exhausted um, so it's not about that. It's about them having a unique life. The one thing that all reflectors will agree upon is that they disagree with what it's like to be a reflector. I mean, they will, they do, because it is different. So how do you get a handle on it? There are certain things that can help. It's important where you live and where you work. You've got to feel comfortable in your environment. So if you think about the milieu of places where you eat and, and hang out and, um, and like to go to, there will be something in common with them. What is that milieu? Um, find out about your environment, um, the one that suits you, the one that's really going to feed you. Um, and again, this is through the PHS uh, environmental information. Um, and again, that's something that I offer if you're interested in. So this is something to understand where you should be. Are you comfortable where you should be? There is this idea that a lot of people have, including reflectors, that they're here just to wander about and they're forever wandering. Well, that's true until they actually get to the place where they feel at home and then they stay. So I want you to understand there can be a place where instead of wandering around, you become the center of the community. So how do you get a handle on it? Place is, is certainly very important. Understanding your the difference of time that you experience. Understand that it takes you a long time. It's going to take you a month to have gone through your moving chart and have some kind of integration of you know, what's really correct for you. The other thing is that there are certain things that are fixed. The incarnation cross is fixed. So the incarnation cross will provide the frame um, in which you are here to fulfill the life. It will give you that overall um, genetic incarnation framework. Um, one of the main things that you're gonna know about is profile. There are only 12 profiles and that profile is again, a fix on your basic nature that will not change. Yes, there will be different costumes that you wear over it depending on the cycles you're in but that basically is still the frame that you will live through so for example if you're a fourth line uh, as a as a reflector it will be where your networks are the information 
the opportunities will come through the networks. Um, if you're a one three, you're going to be much more self-absorbed, etc. There is this also this this growing awareness that you'll have in your experiment that you you this changeability depending on who's around you is going to be something you can get a handle on with practice. Um, behind me, there's a, there's a where are we? You see this painting? Not this one. This one here is a painting of a wheel um, that a reflector uh, did for me. So it's a it's a big eyeball with the human design wheel around it. And if you go into the eyeball, there is shadows of people in front of um, this person or this reflector, what they were actually seeing. And and she said she sees people like shadows initially and then sees which one of them is really different. And that's where they move towards. They're looking for surprise. And you don't know where it's going to come from. But if you're correct in taking your time in making decisions, in, in doing what you can to live a less stressful life, where you can just be in the movement of sampling where you are, then everything is going to change. That's really what I want to say to you. If you want to know more about the reflector, there's a, there's a, a video in the links below that will talk all about it. Uh, but those are the primary things I would uh, be considering in terms of survival guides. All right, hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, then please uh, like it and subscribe and share. All right, thank you. See you again. Bye.